Hello and welcome to this brief tour of Hubble Web. I wanted to come in and show you a little bit about the application. My name is Julie Holmes and I'm a product manager for Hubble. When we first come into Hubble, we actually start here in our hub. This hub provides a dashboard of the application and it tells me some of the things I might be interested in. For example, I can see that I have three alerts, four discussions for items that I follow that I haven't read yet, and a couple of tasks. We're going to talk a lot about workspaces because that's where we see a great part of the power of Hubble. I'm going to start off by going to my workspaces and looking at my business performance overview workspace. A workspace is essentially a multi-page dashboard. And this multi-page multi -page dashboard allows me to see a variety of information organized however it makes sense for me. I can see, for example, that the business performance overview actually has seven pages to it. And if I come up here to the cover, I can actually drop down and see the actual table of contents that makes up this workspace. The very first page, my cover page, illustrates four different types of views that are incorporated. The first is an image in the upper left-hand corner. This image, while a static image, actually allows me to connect people to the data visually. So in this case, I'm including our company logo. I could include a customer logo or an individual's picture. The second box, which is labeled overview, is a text view, and this text view allows me to incorporate instructions, explanations, even guidance of who to contact if there's an issue or a question. It enables me to put additional context around the information that we're seeing so people don't have to ask so many questions and are able to get a better reaction and a better information from the data that they're seeing. In the bottom left-hand corner, I have a um, list view. This list view is like a tabular report. It could be a financial statement or an inventory listing or an age debt report. And finally, in the bottom right, I actually have a visualization. And there are multiple types of visualizations available in Hubble, including charts and metrics and a huge variety of shapes and sizes. And these visualizations help me to quickly see and connect with the data. As I go on to the second page of this workspace, I can see that, first of all, this has got a completely different layout than my first page. I'm actually seeing two visualizations on the left and a list view on the right. When I look at things like my financial performance metrics, perhaps I, as a user, actually want to see that organized differently. I want my financial performance metrics to appear on the top, and I want my revenue trend to appear on the bottom. By allowing me to customize my layout, resizing and reorganizing information, I provide some ownership to the user and that helps them to connect better with the application and with the data that they're seeing. I could even go so far as to completely change the layout so that I'm seeing this data not in the format we just saw, but rather with my visualizations on top. In addition to changing the layout of this, I can also change what data I'm seeing. Right now I'm looking at a combination of May and June, but if I wanted to, I could come down here and select everything on the page and go up and change my filters so that I'm going to change everything so that I'm looking at June. By changing my filter to look solely at June, I apply to everything that's on the page and can quickly see the way that I'm looking at my business. As we move on to the third page of this workspace, I'm able to again see that there's a variety of visualizations. Here we're using some metrics on top that are silhouettes that allow me to recognize and quickly identify my different regions. I'm showing not only their actual performance, but also their goals, and their variance percent. In the bottom left-hand corner, I'm looking at an income statement. But when I look at things on a dashboard or any type of presentation, I need to have 100% confidence in the data that I'm seeing. Consequently, it's important that I'm able to do things like drill down. So I can go from looking at my desktop computers in the East region and go all the way down to the transactions that make that up. I can resize the different pieces of my window so that I can better interact with the data. I can even change this to go and look at sound systems instead of desktop computers. And once I'm in here, I can go even farther than the journal entries and go down to the document. Of course, it's all up to me where I drill down to. I can drill up or down from detail to summary or from summary to detail or from one related report to another unrelated report. It's all up to me to what makes sense for me to be able to feel confident in my data. As we go on to the fourth page of this workspace, I can see that there are more options, again, for how I visualize the information. So here, I'm actually using each page to represent a different way of looking at my data. Now I'm looking at things by region. And as I look at my particular region, I can see that we're using things like cylinders and silhouettes to present my data in a meaningful way. The fifth page of this workspace is great because it shows you 
what a, to what a total visualized workspace might look like. So here I've created something that has a very scorecard look and feel to it. I'm looking solely at my product information. Even when I have visualizations like this, any one of my views can be selected and displayed in full screen. And not only can I display them in full screen to better see the contents, I can also interact with the chart, turning off, for example, you know, outlying, outlying items so that I can better see the details underneath. In addition to the data itself that we're looking at, I also might want to understand more about what's happening in the business around that data. Using my product mix revenue analysis as an example, I can come over and look at the discussion surrounding that item. I can see, for example, that there's been a conversation here about how one business unit has been able to uh, spread out their revenue and ease the spikes in their product mix. There's now dialogue happening about the data. So I'm connecting the intelligence of the people in my organization with the actual information that's coming from my system. And that's providing me with significant competitive advantage. Now up to now, we've been looking primarily at our ERP system. But as I go on to page six, I'm reminded that I'm not limited to just looking at my ERP. Now we're looking purely at our CRM. So this particular page is looking at our forecast by industry, by rep, for a six month time period. In this case, the CRM system we're looking at is salesforce.com. But really what it comes down to is that a lot of times the questions that we're asking in our business aren't tied to one specific system to look at. And sometimes I need to bring in data from multiple systems. Of course, where we really start to see the value come in is not when I just look at CRM or my ERP, but rather when I look at these two systems together. So as you can see down at the bottom, I'm actually seeing my age debt from my ERP system, and side by side with that, I'm seeing my opportunity information from my CRM system. This is really valuable when I'm trying to connect up people in my business to how they work with our customers, for example. In this example, I might have an AR clerk who's about to call on a debt for a customer, but by looking at this, they can see that there's a significant open opportunity for this customer in the next 30 days. This might indicate that they should talk to the sales rep and work with the sales rep to identify first, should they be calling on that debt or should the sales rep perhaps follow up the next time that they're on the customer site to close the opportunity. But basically, what we're looking to do is to answer questions and provide a new way and new value of looking at the data that helps the entire business and ultimately helps you have competitive advantage. Now, looking at all this information is great and particularly it's nice to have dashboards, but in a perfect world, you don't actually need a dashboard because so much of what you look at on a day-to-day -day basis is things that you know you're looking for. And in those instances, perhaps it's better to actually create an alert. With an alert, I have the ability to identify the things that I care about. For example, I might care about whenever I have a customer that's gone over 90 days past due. I could come in and look at a report or look at a dashboard every day to see if I have any new customers over 90 days past due, or I could just tell the system to notify me when that happens. So whether I'm in the system or not, I would get a notification, perhaps in my email or just in the Hubble system. So now I have a listing of all my customers that are over 90 days past due, and Hubble's gonna keep an eye on that for me and let me know if anything requires my attention. This keeps me from having to waste time looking at reports just to see if something has happened. In addition to circulating information through alerts, I can also circulate information through my tasks. When we look at things like tasks, one of the most common types of workflows that might be put in place is an approval. This is where I might take an entire workspace and have that workspace generated in the form of a PDF so that it can be circulated to a group of people either for their review or approval. I could certainly distribute information this way as well. When we, count, when we create an approval process, we're actually generating a PDF with an audit trail and we're tracking centrally in a secure location everything that's happening to that PDF who's looking at it, who's approved it, and what have their comments been for that approval. I have a great audit trail and the ability to go back and look and see where we are in the process at any time. In addition to looking at things like tasks, the last area that I wanna talk about is looking at our actual users. When I look at myself as a user, I can very quickly see how well I'm using the Hubble system. So I can come in and see what our usage looks like, my productivity, my collaboration, and my network. But not only can I see what my performance is like, I can also see how my, what my performance is like compared to others in the organization. So I can see that I'm doing really well compared to others in my productivity, but I'm not using collaboration to its full effect. 
as an organization, that's an opportunity for me to identify our strengths and weaknesses in leveraging the investment that we've made in Hubble. So now I might say, obviously we need to do some type of a training program or education around collaboration, or make sure that everybody understands how we're gaining value from collaboration. So monitoring our use of the product is just as important as a getting use of the product. At any point, it's easy for me to come right back to my hub and find out what's next on the path for me today.